Hey, how you doing? Anthony Ferraro here for Create Sci-Fi. Today I'm going to do another blaster mod, another uh, game system light gun mod. <laughs> this will be the second one. If I do a third, it'll be a series. Okay, so eBay came the other day. <laughs> and I got these really cool... Um, so it's from the Atari XE system. I'll admit, I don't really know much about that system. But once uh, I started doing the um, video game uh, blaster mod investigation, once you go down, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Wow, that feels so good. And it was, you know, I did the zap gun and then the way the internet is, things start popping up. Um, on the 8-bit guy, I mentioned that show. Um, the one guy that he had on there mentioned this and, I was, and I'm so happy I got this. Wow, this is gonna be a great, great mod. Look at that. So, um, yeah, right off the bat, Usually what I do is I open them up when I got them and I put a little weight in there, but this is, I think this is okay. All right, so we'll just fill up these holes, do some paint, and then we'll, we'll figure out some detail stuff. Maybe do a holster. Um, made in Taiwan, <laughs> we can get rid of that. All right, so like I said, um, another game console, light gun mod wow this is a really cool one all right i, I want to dive right into this okay <laughs> so let's go <laughs> all right so the first thing we do is take a look at it and think all righty here we go again <laughs> so this i'm not going to take it apart it's got a great weight so i just take my knife and just simply uh cut off the cord and now i'm going to address these holes for sure i'm going to fill these with bondo but first thing I want to do is clean this up. For some reason, you know, this is a broken gun, which I didn't need a working one, and it was tagged with this sticker that it was like harder to get off than usually what comes on uh, something off of the factory, but it was fine. So now I'm just going to tooth up the area a little bit where I'm going to be putting the Bondo. Just want to sand that and sort of prep it. Now here, um, I don't want to get Bondo all in these grooves since they're so fine. And experience has taught me, you know, I only do Bondo work for these props. So it's not something I work with every day. So I've learned that um, I can get a little messy with it. So all these uh, sharp lines that I don't want to lose with maybe some Bondo getting stuck in there, I just mask them off. Maybe someday I'll be... Um, a Bondo expert, but until that time, um, I just prefer to do that. So now, last week I did the um, pastry chef method. This week I'm going to try to use skewers. So here's the Bondo. You put the kicker in there. Not too much, not too little. It's got to be just right. <laughs> There's no exact formula. And then you really want to work that in there because you don't want to get a clump that doesn't have hardener in it because that's just a that's just a bad day. So now I'm taking these uh, skewers and I'm just um, using the ends of these to, to poke this down in the hole just to make sure that the bondo goes all the way down. And this seems to be working and I'm not getting it everywhere. So now I have these, um, these are like cheap uh, painters tools, like painting palette knives and things, but I find they're perfect for this because they're plastic and I can really um, get a nice application of the bondo. And there you see, yeah, so I didn't get too crazy, didn't get it all over the place. So now I have this second gun, luckily, um, because I got two because they're broken and they were sold in lots of two. So I'll probably do something with it later on, but in the meantime, I can um, do some measurements and do some work while the other piece is drying. So what I'm gonna do now is make a template. And on this handle, I had the idea that I wanna put a strip of leather on there because I've said this before, for me, Ancient Alien is taking like something high tech and then mixing low tech leather elements and wood and things like that. So I have this um, scrap piece of leather that'll be the perfect size. So now I'm going to just roughly cut out uh, the shape 
that I'm going to wrap around the handle guard. Now I want it to be um, a little proud because I want to have some extra to trim off. So here I'm just taking my knife and the main thing um, that I have to be sort of exact about is just this area where it goes around the trigger. That has to be tight. But the rest of it, like I said, I want to have some overhang and then I'll trim that. So it looks like that's gonna be fine. So now I just uh, got some warm water and what I'm gonna do is put the, uh, the leather in there and that's going to soften it up and make it um, really easy to work with. Leather is a really, really uh, great thing to work with. Um, you know, it's, it's very flexible and it's pretty easy. It doesn't fight you, it works with you. So now I'm just pressing it in. I want it to lock into those grooves. So I'll sort of have like a, a key to put it back in. And you see there, it conforms perfectly to that. So now I'm going to take some aluminum foil um, because I don't want to put tape on that leather and it's wet. And just to get it to really, really um, dig in and take that form, I'm using electrical tape because that I can really bear down on. So I'm going to wrap the electrical tape around there. And um, so this you know, everything is uh, making it up as you go along sometimes, right? So that tape and the foil really, really uh, made it conform to that shape and that worked really nicely. However, what it did do is not allow uh, the moisture to escape. So off camera, I sort of did this as a two part process. So I left uh, for quite a few hours with that really tight electrical tape and then later off camera I removed that and then just clamped it down with a, a few um, popsicle artist sticks and then so so it was able to air dry all right so now we're back on the main piece and this bondo is dry and I like to use these uh, emery boards or you know they're nail file sticks you know so these are just really good especially when you're working with these hand size props to really get in there and there's various sizes and you see there I'm smoothing it out and um, I even have those uh, sanding sticks those <laughs> are not <laughs> for nails so those I had to get out of the hobby shop but yeah that that is looking really good that's really flush not too crazy but now we got to get rid of these seams so the seams are always challenging and what i've been doing lately um, is i take some super glue and sometimes you have seams that flex so you'll get them nice and smooth but then there's a little bit of give so what i found is i put a little bit of super glue i hit it with the kicker so now that's firm and then the glue also fills up the crevice and then i sand it you don't want to go crazy with the glue that's why i use a brush so now, um, once I'm done sanding, I like to cover the whole thing um, with a Scotch-Brite and then with a fine steel wool. And that's really just because, you know, we're spray painting onto plastic, so you wanna make sure that the whole entire surface is toothed up so the, the paint has something to really dig into. And yeah, that looks good. So now I'm gonna hit this with the black primer. I like using the black primer. And there you see um, what I mentioned uh, back before when I was putting on the leather, how I had more of an air dry system there. So this looks really good. It totally conformed. And now I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and this I'm being very careful with because this is you know one of those steps where this will set you back three steps. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get a nice clean cut on there. And so that could not be uh, a better fit. Very pleased with that. So I cut the rest of it out and now I carefully remove that and it maintains all the grooves. And then that way when I glue that in there, it's really gonna make a tight fit. So now I have these uh, sheets of wood with a, with a sticky tacky back. I really like this material. I've used it a lot and I've used it in a lot of builds and I still just have the one sheet that I originally 
built because I, I tend to use it just for like detail work. So there's these inlays here on the gun where originally I guess there was like the metallic Atari logo or you know some sort of whatever the name of the gun was for the for the game. So here I'm just putting on a piece of painter's tape so that I can make a template again getting a lot of use out of the wooden skewers in this build. And so here I remove the tape. So now I have a template that I can transfer onto uh, the wood veneer. And that is a really tight fit. You know, it's really nice to work on this gun because it's so um, geometric. Like it's, it has a lot of precision lines and that actually really makes it easier to sort of cut out these templates. All right, so now I'm laying this on the the tacky peel-off side. And on with this uh, paper, it's actually, well, wood, veneer, it's actually very easy to cut with scissors. It almost feels like construction paper. So that's really cool if you have an organic shape. So now I did the angles with the scissors, but for these straight lines, I just want to use a ruler and an X-Acto just so I can get those right on the money because we want them to fit snugly in the um, the pocket that's there on the gun. So I remove these um, from the sheet of veneer, being careful. And now I'm just uh, setting up a little paint station. So with little parts, um, this is a trick that I've learned from lots of makers on YouTube is you just flip a piece of tape and that gives you the tacky back. And then when you put your small pieces on there, when you spray them or paint them or brush them, whatever you're doing, it keeps them from going all over the place. And, you know, <laughs> I'll admit I may have lost a piece before. So that prevents you from losing stuff. So now I'm using some real wood stain. And that's what I like about this material. It's actually wood, right? So I'm getting a nice um, grain look on this. And that looks great. And I'm gonna put that aside to dry. And then now, um, the the primered gun is dry and ready for the next step so i'm going to do a dry brush of gold uh i just felt because this was such a sort of stealthy like fine line piece i thought gold would look great on this so here i am just doing a dry brush you're just going to put a little bit of paint on the brush and you're just going to kiss the surface kiss the surface now this is a little more than a dry brush i shouldn't call it a dry brush this is a light painting with a dry brush dry brush technique technically is just hitting the edges to make it look like exposed metal and that really looks cool all right so now i just have this one little detail um, it's a recess in the back of the gun and I'm just going to use this metallic copper and sorry I did that <laughs> kind of off camera but there you see just you know one of those little things that you won't notice but it, it adds value so now because that's real wood I like to treat it like real wood and I'm going to use a beeswax here and that just gives it a really nice veneer finish. Again, these are like little subtle things, but I know they're there. I figured, well, I had this piece of scrap leather and I really wanted to do a very minimal holster for this. So here I um, size out the piece. All I'm going to do is cut out um, just a little notch right there so that the trigger will sit in there. It'll set down. And then I'm just going to put a strip of leather on the back of that to hang it from the belt. Now, this is one of those moments where I'm not really sure what happened, but the, the video of this <laughs> just sort of disappeared. But basically, after this step, what I do is similar to the handle. So I'm going to take that piece of leather, I'm going to soak it in some warm water, and you just soak it for about four or five seconds, and then you wrap it around and conform it to the, the size of the gun and you put that aside. All right, so now I'm going to put these pieces of veneer in here. So I just want to tooth up uh, the area where we're going to be laying down these pieces of veneer, just so that it has something to stick to. I get it down to the original plastic. I don't want to put this on top of the paint. I want it to have something more substantial to grab onto. So now I just carefully lay this in there. This is one of those things you gotta take a deep breath because you get one shot at it or you know when you go to if you have to redo it it's it's not as nice and yeah that looks really cool again subtle 
but super cool. All right, so now we got to glue this on here. So to glue this on, I'm going to first sand this up, right? Same thing like we did on those side panels. Just want to get rid of paint and have something really toothed up for the glue to grab on. And I even take my file here and I really just make some random grooves in there just for the glue to really dig in. So I'm going to use um, E6000 on this. I've said before, I just like when I'm working with organic materials, in this case leather, I just like to use this glue. You could use contact cement super glue, but this is what I like to use. And because I want this to have a tight fit, I actually use a disposable brush to, just to make sure that I cover the area completely and that it's evenly spread out. Now I carefully lock this piece of leather back into those grooves which we made it conform to and paying, um, and paying special attention to that area around the trigger. That's the only sort of tricky area. But yeah, that all came together. All right, so now I want to dye this leather. Um, I just put some masking around the gun since we painted it. I don't want to get leather dye all over everything. So here I'm just working this uh, darker leather dye into our handle. And what this is going to do is the darker color I think will match our paint better. And also once I have that dye on there, it'll allow me to weather it up by um, sanding it a little, which I'll show you in a moment. So now here on this holster, I have two sort of different color pieces of leather. I was just using scrap pieces to do this. This is like an afterthought. So I'm going really heavy on the dye just so that it all looks uniform. And yeah, you know, that's very simple, but now there's a holster. And here is the finished handle piece. That color matches much better, there you see. So now that the leather is dry, we're just gonna take a piece of sandpaper and this is, you know, we weather the props all the time. So this is how you weather leather with sandpaper. You just scuff it up. Same theory, right? As with props, it's like, what are the high points? What are probably gonna be rubbing against other things that will get worn? Maybe the hand goes over. And now I'm, I'm going a little gentle on the handle grip because I had a, because I have a tendency sometimes to go a little heavy with the weathering. And this, I wanna just make sure that it stays nice Looks beat up, but stays nice. <laughs> and there, yeah, I am liking that. All right, we're getting there. So now I have this mink oil, love the mink oil, and we're gonna condition the leather. This is what really makes it pop. It's very similar, right, when we do the weathering later, or you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, once we do the weathering, we seal it in with a clear coat. The conditioner is, is, I guess, like the clear coat on the leather, right? And it just gives it that little extra bit of umph. <laughs> so now I'm carefully putting it on the handle. I'm being very, very careful on this build. It's, it's something, you know, you're always learning. I realize, like, I always blow through these things. So I'm trying to make an effort to just be a little more delicate. And that is working. Yeah. All right, so now I'm just gonna weather it a little bit. I got some burnt umber, which I'm mainly gonna use, and then a little bit of black. Um, I'm not going to wash down the whole thing like I do sometimes. I'm just going to pick and choose my areas where I'm going to just um, put some paint in here to simulate dirt and grime um, that would be in some sort of handheld objects that's been used for years. So I, it's a, still a random thing, right? So I'm just sort of randomly picking and choosing and then you wipe it off with the paper towel and what's ever left is left. And that's how it sort of emulates the real world, right? By being random about it. You don't want to be exact in the sort of calculating about where you put this stuff. What I tend to do is I, I start to zero in on a place and then I stop myself and then just go to the left. <laughs> And that way I assure I get a random pattern. And then make sure you dry it all off uh, with the paper towel. And make sure you get it all because sometimes you'll end up with a little droplet and it'll just look weird once it dries. And there it is weathered. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of um, bringing out the highs. 
Now, all the time, uh, I use rub and buff for this, but I went to the store, they didn't have rub and buff, so this is the same um, stuff, it's just a different brand. So we're going to hit the high points just to make them pop. And it's interesting, and something simple, you know, metallic wax, rub and buff, it's actually an older brand, and I've, I missed it. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna hit this with a clear coat. And let's see how far we took this. There's the original. And da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, right? Ancient Alien. All right, some beauty shots. I really like the lines in this piece. And that handle with just that little bit of leather. Nice. And then the wood panel inlay. I like that because you probably don't notice it right away. But then if you do notice it, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, that, that really looks good. I'm really happy with the way that came out. I mean, I can imagine just doing a lot more uh, video game blaster mods. Uh, yeah, look at that. Holster, very simple, but you know, why not? So, um, wow, this is really my favorite style too. Um, for me, I'm a big fan of what I consider, what I call um, ancient alien, right? And to me, that's like, I, I don't know what other people think, but for me personally, um, how I classify that is, is a, like a 70s design aesthetic space 1999 or star trek and then adding organic elements to it right some people might think steampunk but steampunk is more uh victorian um you know a uh, little more uh, bulky not as sleek um so yeah i'm really really happy with the way that turned out oh it's so cool and like the zap gun is awesome but this just has a you know a little more style and that leather handle really really cool oh man well you know i hope this inspired you to to dig out your old video games and, <laughs> and modify the, the the laser guns right well i guess the only thing left to do now is to fire it up <laughs> now usually my uh, guns are, are blasters but this feels a little more surgical a little more precise so let's see what it does some buttons back here uh, okay <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that's pretty cool one more time <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to read the comments. And be sure to sign up for the email newsletter. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>